a fright for the twins. After Duck left to run his branch line, Donald and Douglas took turns shunting at the big station. The trucks and coaches gave them no trouble, and the yard was kept ship shape. The other tender engines were grateful. They didn't like shunting one bit. One afternoon, Douglas was taking on water when Gordon puffed in with the express. Douglas took the coaches to the carriage shed. As he did, a thought struck him. Where's your special coach? he asked. Afraid you've lost it again, replied Gordon smugly. Och, did it be daft, grunted Douglas. I haven't seen it for years, replied Gordon. It just vanished. Strange coach it was, stuck out like a sore buffer on my express. It's likely long gone now. Douglas shuddered. The thought of scrap sent shivers through his frames. That evening, Douglas was shunting after the last train had gone. Mist hung low over the rails, and save for the occasional owl, all was quiet. Douglas was still pondering the special coach's disappearance. It couldn't have been my fault, could it? The passengers were upset. What if it was scrapped because of me? Douglas was so preoccupied. He hadn't realized where he was. He'd ventured into the deepest, loneliest part of the yard. Light flickered all around, and an eerie stillness blanketed the sidings. He was just leaving the trucks when... Douglas froze. What was that? His eyes settled on a dark shape further down the siding. It sat motionless in the shadows, but Douglas felt like it was watching him. Pause. Need help. Who's there? shivered Douglas. The floodlights flickered. Now, Douglas recognized the shape as a coach. Its weary eyes seemed to be glaring at him. Oh, jinx, he cried, and raced back to the shed. Next morning, he told the other engines about it. I say you were working too late, chuckled Henry. Or, ventured Gordon, perhaps the spirit of the coach is seeking revenge. Gordon wailed in a ghostly, teasing manner. Dinna ye joke about that, huffed Donald. Dougie could have seen saw him back there. Why don't you find out for yourself, eh? teased Gordon. I would, said Donald, but I'm taking wee Percy's mail train the night. Excuses, excuses, smirked Gordon. Donald scowled away, while Douglas begged James to take over his night shift. That evening, Donald set off from the harbor with the mail. Fog danced in the air of the silent night. As he neared the junction, the moon caught the faint silhouettes of coaches in the carriage shed. Donald shivered as he turned up the branch line. Then, in the distance, he thought he heard something. Just the wind, he thought dismissively. Help me. The wailing grew louder. Ahead, there was a flicker of red and a rather coach-like shape looming in the fog. Who's there? stammered Douglas. Didn't it come for me, you spooky? No need to be rude. It's only me. At last, Donald's lamp cut through the fog. There was Daisy, shivering in the dark. Her driver held a red lantern. Blasted cold weather's been playing with Daisy's engine. It cut out as we were going back to the shed. 
Oh, I'm headed to the top station, Donald sighed with relief. I'll give you a push. Thomas was settling into the shed when the cavalcade arrived. A rail car and mail cars? My, my, Donald, that's quite the train. Took him long enough to realize it was me, flounced Daisy. What was all that ghost claptrap about? Donald explained his twin's encounter. Take my advice, chuckled Thomas. When you want proper gossip, don't listen to Gordon. He may pull the express, but he's barely so much as looked in the carriage shed. Let me tell you what happened. The next morning, Donald led Douglas back to the deepest part of the yard. I didn't like this, Donald, whimpered Douglas. I tell you what I saw. Oh, quit your blithering and come on, would ye? You'll see. Deeper and deeper into the yard they went. Douglas grew more nervous with every wheel turn. Suddenly, there it is, he cried. Sat at the back of the sidings was the special coach. Oh, 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 oh good morning. Uh, forgive me, but I don't usually have visitors. I thought I'd been forgotten. What are you doing there? The passengers complained I wasn't as comfortable as the other coaches, she harumphed. And all those express runs wore me down. I was put aside for maintenance, but just kept getting pushed further and further into the yard. And now, here I am. She sighed and looked at her buffers. Oh, how I'd love to be useful again. I may have forgotten you once, chuckled Douglas, but Donald and I'll make sure that Disney happen again. And I know how we can get back at Gordon, smirked Donald. Some nights later, Gordon arrived at the workstation with his evening express. It was a calm night, and save for the passengers, there wasn't a sound to be heard. Until... Everyone froze. Gordon's eyes widened. Gordon! Uh, who's there? He stammered. You forgot me. Oh, I... Who, who are... I'll make sure you never forget. Again! To Gordon's horror, an old coach rolled out of the work shed. Then came a whistle right beside him. Boo! Gordon weeshed and jumped. Oh, heavens, help! He cried, closing his eyes. It's only me. Gordon opened his eyes and found Donald next to him, while Douglas crept out of the work shed with the coach. The passengers, the crew, and the twins erupted with laughter. Gordon blushed. When the fat controller heard, he had a good laugh too, and ordered the coach's immediate restoration. She now helps the twins take passengers down Duck's branch line. They call her Isla. She loves her new name and that she's a special coach once more. She likes a bit of fun, too, and never misses a chance to ooh eerily when the express passes. Gordon doesn't answer. He now finds the subject of ghosts quite undignified.